previously on Pandemus. You guys are done acting like children? We have an island to get to. Kids, they can face death at any time. Let's just get there. I started the bomb three months ago. <laughs> it was a regular day in Red Haven. Our story begins in Lakewood High. Math class to be exact. Let's begin with JJ. She isn't the typical teenager. She really doesn't have any friends except for her cousin Silas and her friend Amber. To give you a better picture of what she looks like, she has long straight midnight blue hair that complements her dark skin and light brown eyes, a septum piercing and dimples that only made her stand out more. Her glasses hang at the tip of her nose, showing she's one of the brightest students in the school. Okay class, quiet down. It's time to begin our lesson for the day. Does anyone know the answer to question number two? It's two. No, it's not. Yes, it is, loser. No, it's not. What makes you so sure the answer isn't two? Well, to find the circumference of the circle, you have to multiply the diameter of pi, making the answer simply six, not two. Well done, Miss Johnson. As JJ walks up to a locker, Dexter approaches her in the hallway. You think you're so smart, don't you? I was just correcting your mistakes. You should be thankful. Since you think you're so smart, you have to write my Common App essay for me. Are you out of your mind? I'm not writing that for you. If anyone finds out, I could get expelled. Well, then you better make sure nobody finds out. Dexter starts to walk away. And I want it done by Friday. And what if I don't do it? Dexter pulls out his phone and shows JJ a video. JJ gasps. Where'd you get that video? She panics. Dexter walks away, leaving JJ in the hall alone, confused and scared. Dexter walked away from his rival, feeling bad for what he just did to her. As soon as the thought of feeling bad for someone came to mind, he was quick to push it out of his head. Although Dexter was an orphan, he had his mother's brown eyes and his father's brown hair which he styled pushed back. He adored the way he looked because it connected him to his real parents. Dexter was alone his whole childhood. He bounced around three different foster homes before he was adopted at the age of 10. His new adopted parents had very high expectations of him and wanted him to be perfect in school. While kids were playing tag at recess, he was studying the dictionary in his bedroom all alone, wishing he had friends. He became this cold person when he entered high school and experienced what he thought was a friendship. But what really turned out to be someone using him for grades. After being humiliated, he promised himself he would never let his guard down for anyone to avoid being hurt. Slowly but surely, he became the thing he hated the most, a bully. He started to notice that people liked him this way became very popular and made lots of so-called friends. Dexter snaps back into reality once he notices Amber. Dexter stares at Amber's grin eyes as he thought about how pretty she was to him. He fantasizes all the possible outcomes of them being together. Embarrassed, he looked away once he felt her eyes look at him. What are you looking at, ugly? Amber rolls her eyes and walks away. Despite being one of the most popular girls in school, all her life, she's been taking on the role of a mom to her eight siblings. Once her father died of illness, her mother lost herself and started drinking. Amber is what people these days would call a dumb blonde, and the way she looks fits that stereotype perfectly. She has bleach blonde shoulder length hair, dark skin, a great smile that complements her cheekbones and loves to wear lip gloss. Despite her perfect appearance, truly she just wanted to be a shadow, alone. She didn't want anyone to try to read her, and the best thing she could think of was being giggly and pretending that everything was okay to hide the hurt that was stuck in her perfect world. Amber enters the classroom, takes a seat, and sees no sign of Silas, her best friend. Bonjour, class. Today we'll be learning how to start a conversation. Fifteen minutes go by. 
If you want to say, very good, thanks, you can say, très bien, merci. To say, my name is, you say, je m'appelle. Sorry for interrupting your class, Mrs. Dupont. I found her skipping. Silas rolls her eyes and takes a seat right next to Amber. So why are you late? And you smell like you've been smoking. How are you? What do you think I was doing in the bathroom? Vivian, all the time? <laughs> means I come from. <laughs> Typical Silas. Silas is a rebel in every way. She's mischievous, edgy, reckless, and wants to be free. She also has a unique and rebellious style. A few tattoos, red dreads that complements her brown skin, and a slit in her perfectly done eyebrows that represent her personality. Despite being in her own world, she's caring and very loyal to her friends. Hidden under the eye makeup and edgy clothes, Silas is one of the most intelligent students in her class with nearly perfect SAT scores due to her lack of confidence and slacker attitude. No one knows about this secret part of her life. Okay, I know we know these. We? Oui. Yes. No? No. Merci. Thank you. Attention all teachers. Please lock up the rooms. There has been an intrusion into the school. Students, don't.